I have to say this has been one of the most uh, astounding weeks for me, uh, as it has been for most Americans. And, uh, and just trying to sift through some of what God has been trying to at least do in my head, uh, watching the division, watching the frustration, watching in disbelief, watching uncertainty and the unrest and all. Uh, I have to say, I look forward to the end of all the negativity, the, neg the negativity, not the nativity, the negativity. Uh, but as uh, we can expect, the more divisive the campaign has been, uh, the more divisive the aftermath would be. And that's exactly what we have. Um, so it's true, we reap what we sow. And that's exactly what uh, we've seen. Um, comparing our uncertain earthly future with a certain heavenly one, however, has, uh, has just kind of made the contrast that much more interesting for me. Especially, um, because I, it makes it that much more joyous for me. Uh, the joy doesn't come in who gets elected as much as the fact that we are by our God. And uh, the fact that before all of eternity, uh, he decided that he was going to choose you. He was going to bring you to himself. He was going to forgive you. He was going to wash you. He was going to call you his own. And, uh, and allow you to know him, allow you to know him personally through Jesus. Um, it was just interesting watching the contrast of the kind of the tearfully sorrow ones on the night of the election as well as the joyous elated ones on the night of the election. Um, but again, it just strikes me how easily we can be tempted to allow earthly outcomes to affect everything about us. You know, um, and they're not just political ones, sometimes religious <coughs> things, sometimes cultural, sometimes environmental things, depending upon your, you know, your, your makeup, if you will. It's one thing to be broken over an election, it's another thing to be broken over sin. And uh, I couldn't help but think of Ezra reading the, the, the book of the law, uh, and the people just sitting there astounded, actually not sitting there, standing as he read it, and then weeping um, over what they recognized had been their failure. Um, and then he says, and then, and he says to them, uh, this day is holy to the Lord, don't mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping. Uh, and then he said, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing already, for this day is holy to our Lord. Don't be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Um, it just, again, it just strikes me where God wants us to draw our strength from, where he wants us to put uh, our energies, our passions. And uh, you, you see so much passion uh, that goes sideways so quickly uh, throughout the week. Um, it's hard for me to, to, to see it as entertaining, but uh, I was just, I was stuck on it. I was just sitting there in disbelief watching all of this kind of take place. Um, and recognizing that however man purposes the course of human events, uh, God purposes them for his own purposes very differently than we do. Um, and I think Jesus is a good example of that, and especially as you look at how God spoke through Isaiah in Isaiah 53. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He'll be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, his form beyond that of the children of mankind. Who has believed what he has heard from us? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up, speaking of Christ, before him, if you will, like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, no beauty that we should desire him. How different from our political scene. He was despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. But surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. Um, 
we're not picturing Christ um, as somebody who is forlorn, somebody who is um, seen as depressed or brooding. Uh, or even sad. I think what this is really trying to picture is really the the way the world would see somebody, and yet the very antithesis of what God is doing in in that person, in the Savior, which is so like um, everything that we see. We just can't really see what God has purposed in all of this, but what we do see um, is that we know Jesus was more than just a sorrowful character. I mean, he was uh, a charismatic figure in the least. Uh, not necessarily because he had Hollywood film looks, which is the way they always put him. According to this, it probably was, may have been very different. Uh, but because of the powerful impact of his life and his teaching, when you think of thousands of people attracted to his ministry, thousands of people who hung on his every word on a hillside, um, <coughs> watching miraculous power, the compassion toward, uh, that he had toward the diseased and the oppressed and the poor and the helpless. Um, there were those who resented those attributes because Jesus pointed out, even by demonstrating those, their hypocrisy, the shallowness of who they were. Um, in the last hours of his passion, he certainly felt fear. We know that uh, because death was imminent. but. Don't miss that the grief he bore was ours, was ours. He bore our grief. He bore our sorrows, our sorrows. Um, and we need, to, we need to keep that in mind, because God has it all in control. Um, Jesus had known the glory of heaven's worship, and he took on flesh, and in so doing, he took on all of our weakness and all of our shame. Um, and because of it, we're free. We're free. Um, and that to me is just a perspective that, especially this week, just began to rise up in me and I went, you know, I'm so glad I've got a future. I'm so glad I have a future. We, we know that no party, no political party, no person, no election, no government will ever be able to affect the heart change that only God can do. And, the, and, the, and that's the only way things are going to change, ever. Never. Um, only the Spirit of God can do that. I was just amused by this, the themes of the campaign. And America will never be great again until America recognizes God is great again. Yes. Don't, yes. don't forget that. Yeah. And we will never be stronger together until we are stronger in Christ together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if those things don't happen, heaven help us. But we still have a future beyond anything that we see. As much as we know that, uh, as the song goes, we, we, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. <laughs> and uh, that's why I think Paul admonished the church in Ephesus when he said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you among, uh, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And that's what the people of Christ's body need to be. That's what we need to, to hold on to all the way through. So, you know, uh, I don't know how you responded this week, uh, but I, uh, I've, I've gone through a number of elections, not as many as some of you. Uh, <laughs> but probably twice as many as some of you as well. And, uh, and because of that, because of that, it gives me great hope that, that I can find joy in the midst of it. But it had nothing to do with what I saw. And it had everything to do with, as Jesus said, blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. And that's, that's where we sit, right? So, but that gives us the ability to really be the people of the church and to stand in confidence with that no matter what. I think uh, David, uh, David's been helping us a lot, I think, in his preaching and, and just understanding especially what's gone on in the, in the political realm. He's done a great job with that. And uh, so let's take the people of the church and uh, maybe we can just rejoice a little bit that we are of another kingdom. Right? And uh, thank you for your continued support of our missionary friends. 
Just remember, next week, just so that you know, next week, the money that goes in here is going to be used to support families here at Grace, the care offering, uh, the Christmas care offering. So, uh, just so that you're aware of that, I don't want anybody to be surprised uh, or think that they're giving to something that they, they didn't think they were. Let's stand up and